What was your big takeaway from the Warrior game last night? Great game. Great game. And uh, you got beat on a three ball that, uh, you know, is, is going to go in maybe one out of every ten times. And you tip your cap. You played a very good game, competitive game. And it's a shame that the winning streak ended. And now you could look at, a lot of times, you know, you look at a game like that and you would skew toward the negative. I would skew toward the positive. Now, there were some negatives. Draymond Green gets ejected, two technicals. Neither one of which was maybe that worthy. <laughs> yeah, the okay. first tech is your garden variety. Oh, yeah, yeah, enough yeah. of you. Enough of you and you're talking. The second one is, unfortunately, wh- where we are now in the NBA society where two players can't get linked up at all like that without us having to go to New York and determine that that's double technicals. I don't like it. That's the reality in which we live. The other negative piece, Jordan Poole. Doesn't seem to have the late game awareness you're looking for from a guy who, you know, again, Clay Thompson on a heater. The guy's on fire. He's a Hall of Famer, yet Jordan Poole goes headlong in and makes another late game, out of control, reckless turnover that that doesn't help. Okay. I want to have Jordan Poole's back today. And 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 here's why. I don't, it's not that I don't have his back, right, right? But I like like even in this conversation. So I, I, I'm going to acknowledge one thing first, and it, it it is this: there is an uncanny, and incredibly frustrating streak going on of Jordan Poole with the ball in his hands in a key crunch time moment where Dibs. It's not just that it doesn't go in; he doesn't even get a shot off. It's I fell over my own feet or bounced it off my knee. I bounced it off my foot, passed it to no one, or I fell. I, I tried to do a fall away and it got blocked or even the Utah game. I, I didn't even hold on to the ball. I just let someone take the ball right out of my hands. All of these things have happened at an uncanny rate so far this year. And that is, um, it is frustrating for a fan. Number one. And number two, I, I think it's indicative of Jordan Poole's lack of readiness to be an NBA one, but dot, 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 that's okay. He's still so young. He doesn't need to be an NBA one yet because the Warriors already have that. Jordan Poole is still a one in training. I don't know if he's ever going to get there. He's with Yoda right now. We'll see if he becomes Skywalker. Maybe he won't. I'm sorry, Bonte, if that went over your head, but anyway, <laughs> nice, right? Like, Here's the other. That's actually a good comp because Skywalker in the swamp, a lot of turnovers, right? <laughs> a lot of petulance <laughs> yes. and a lot of immaturity. Yes, yes. And, and you know, and, and, and the bottom line is Jordan. There, stop trying. There is no try. It's do or do not. And right now you are do notting. But the idea. So pass the rock, right? Except for here's the thing: you're in your your NBA one moment tie game down one whatever it is. You got the rock is not built for catch-and-shoot players. It's built to be in the hands of the person who can break someone down off the dribble. And when Steph Curry and Andrew Wiggins are in street clothes, there's one warrior who can break someone down off the dribble. It's Jordan Poole. He still does it too wildly, but I understand why the ball is in his hands in that moment rather than Clay's. Even if it's going to end up being Clay, it needs to be a penetrate and kick to Clay a la the three-pointer he hit to tie the game. Which was a catch-and-shoot. Catch-and-shoot, exactly. So those moments are designed for catch-and-shoot no, plays. But, but but Jordan's turnover before that was not. There's 10 seconds on the clock. That's right. not catch-and-shoot. That's break someone down. It's But it's not break someone down and have Jordan Poole try to do it himself. And he's not... It kind of is. That's, that's what it's you do really in a tie not. game in the NBA. It's, it's really not. And, you know, you can penetrate and kick, or you can give the ball to Draymond and have him set up clay in a different way. Right now, what we have is Jordan Poole with the ball in his hands, headlong, out of control, and he's not even getting a shot up. Yeah, but granted, right, which is super frustrating, but my point is, think about any NBA game. You're down one or you're tied, and there's 10 seconds to go. If Portland's in town, they're down one with 10 seconds, what do you think's happening? You're moving the ball around? You've got Damian Lillard. Exactly. Jordan Poole, you're he, not Damian Lillard. No, but he's Damian Lillard in training. He's That's not what even he's, close to Damian Lillard. No, he's not. I agree with you. You but, can't sniff Damian Lillard. But that's what he wants to be. And he's the closest thing the Warriors have if Curry and Wiggins are on the sideline. I but guess, he's not him. And we talked about him. But he is what you got. 
he is him available. He thinks that he's him. No, but he is. He is. He's the guy who gets the ball in that situation. Any NBA team down one with 10 seconds is going to go here. Here's the ball. See what you can do. And Jordan Poole right now with Curry and Wiggins sideline is that guy. I'm granting you the wild frustration of how many times in a row he can't even seem to get a shot off. But the other side of the coin is, is that Jordan Poole through this winning streak has had phenomenal moments and the Warriors can't really be effective without him. So it is absolutely one of those moments where you just got to, you got to take the gut punch and and I, I I totally understand how frustrating it is, but Jordan Poole is still an NBA one in training. He is not. He'll got, never be an NBA. And one. that's a fair opinion. If he's an NBA one, you are twenty two and sixty. I agree with you right now. I don't know what he's going to be oh, four I, I, years I would, from now. I would go ahead and project it out, unless well, that's, and that's fair. You know, that, you can have that opinion unless you want to think that he's going to become a Steph Curry. Well, Look at Damian Lillard as a one. He has never been on a team that has threatened an NBA championship. Yeah, he's, a, he's an NBA one on a pretty much a mediocre team year in and year out. But, Dibs, what did Steph Curry look like when he was 22? That, I, I'd ask you that. What was Jordan Poole two and a half years ago? You would not have projected this. And so right. I don't know what he's going to be two and a half years from now. I know what he wants to be. I know what he's trying to be. I know what the Warriors are hoping they are paying him to be. He, uh, which is potentially an NBA one. But right now, he's still got the training wheels on. Well, he's trying too hard to be that right now, in my opinion. And okay. there are so many different ways you can get a bucket down one. And right now, the Jordan Poole dribble, 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 I'm going to make this happen <laughs> modality is not working. So maybe we try a different way. And, you know, you look at the inbounds pass, you're down by three, that inbound play Steve Kerr and that beloved whiteboard draws up an absolute beauty. They execute to perfection. Bing, screen, bam, clay, got it, tie game. Uh, Are you telling me we can't draw up a play in that fashion down one? But you wouldn't do that with 10 seconds to go because that's not the highest percentage thing. Like we we look. Jordan Poole going solo dolo is not the highest percentage thing. That's actually the lowest percentage thing. And I grant you that that has been the trend. But in theory, giving the ball to your best breakdown on the dribble player and letting him drive, and whether that's shoot, kick, or get fouled, that is the highest percentage thing you can do in that situation. The reason the Warriors draw draw up such a brilliant play in that moment, granted is part of it because there's only like a, a tick or two on the clock, but you know what happens when a team is up three and there's three seconds to go. They foul you. They're not going to let you shoot. Well, they don't do that anymore. Well, Kalena some... Azubuki was making a great point. Teams aren't doing that as much as they used Which to. Which is wild. I don't even I don't understand uh, yeah. it. But in order to even get the three-pointer off, it has to be something like what the Warriors did, which is not only did they create a three for their best three-point shooter, they did it in such a quick pinball way that the Pistons didn't even have time or ability to foul if they wanted to which is what, in theory, you would want to do. So that's why you do that when there's three or four ticks on the clock. But when there's 10, I I don't know any NBA team that doesn't say, here. I mean, even when the Warriors had like four of the top seven players in the world all on their team, if they had been in that situation five years ago, they would have handed the ball to Kevin Durant and said, here. Go. But it wouldn't have been, and let's he's try Kevin to break Durant. a guy down off the dribble. Yes, it would have. He's Kevin Durant. It would be Kevin Durant back to the basket. Just shoot over the guy. Why don't uh, exactly. we post up Clay Thompson? Or why don't we set a ball screen for Jordan Poole? Because, and I'm looking at the play right now. He's got the ball. There's 10 on the game clock, and there's 9 on the shot clock. So you don't have to go. In that moment, you're down one. But you're down, so you want to go as quickly as possible because if it doesn't work, exactly what... You want a foul, exactly. Exactly what ended up happening. They still had a chance. maybe you can send a screen Jordan Poole's way. Sure. Or maybe you can, you know, I don't know. Draymond Green couldn't be involved because you you can't control your emotions, Draymond, and so you got kicked out 